All right, hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna to be talking about uh, changes or mods I think make sense. This will be my second video on it because I already have a first one that um, I think I dropped about two weeks ago and you guys enjoyed it. We had a little discussion about different types of mods and changes we would like to see. And this is pretty much gonna be a part two. I've written a pretty big script. I'm gonna put this on the screen right now. It's uh, two ideas that I think that should be added into the game. Whether it's from uh, the developers or mods, doesn't really matter to me. I'm just going to put my ideas out there. If you guys agree with it, let me know. If you disagree, let me know. And uh, yeah, let's have a little discussion. But the two things I want to talk about today are breaking out lords in dungeons and also ship slash desert training. trading. And I'm pretty much going to get into uh, both of them, get kind of in depth. And uh, yeah, we'll see where it goes from there. But like always, the script will be down in the description if you guys want to either read along or translate or whatever. But yeah, let's get into it. So, Lords in Dungeon, I think you should be able to break them out. And uh, this is how I would do it. So first of all, right now in the game, whenever a Lord goes into a dungeon, they stay there and then eventually they escape, right? And um, if you go and check on them, like we're going to do so right now. Uh, they usually either don't talk at all, there's no even option for talking, or sometimes you might get an option, but they will always respond with, I'm not allowed to talk to you. So there's not really anything you could do with them right now inside the basic game, right? And these guys are locked in cages, so they're not even going to talk to me, which is unfortunate. But yeah, sometimes they talk, sometimes they literally don't say a word to you like right now. Now, here's my, um, pretty much what I would like to, uh... What I would like to do is, once you can approach them in the dungeon like usual, right? And then you guys can figure out a way to break them out for a form of compensation, right? And um, in my opinion, for this to work, you need to have a high level of roguery right here for better success chances. And also, um, I think it should be one of the skills to break out the... Uh, clan leaders pretty much right if it's just a basic lord who's under let's say if we go back here uh go over here go to the dungeon if it just says noble or vassal or mercenary they're not worth much that's just basic right so you don't need like a skill high level to break them out right but let's say it says ruler of a kingdom right or ruler of a clan then i feel like it should um there should be a skill, let's say, in roguery, probably like 225 that says, able to break out clan leaders. I feel like that should be implemented. But, um, so pretty much compensation, what you would get. So we're going to do compensation, then we're going to do the negatives of uh, pretty much doing this, right? So compensation, I feel like the most common form of compensation for lords that are not leaders, right? Like these guys that I just showed, a noble... Um, either a vassal or a mercenary, those guys, and if they're not the leader of their clan, they will usually offer you 3 to 30 of their best troops based on your charm skill. So if you have a high charm skill, more troops they will offer you pretty much. You know what I mean? So if this skill is high, they're going to offer you more troops, plus dinars, plus reputation. That's just going to be the most common form of payment if they are not the leader, right? Which I think is pretty good, right? Now, if you choose to break out the head of a minor faction, right? A minor faction has to be these boys right here. If we go to minor, these guys, any of these guys, the guys will usually become mercenaries, right? So if you break one of them out, then they will join you as a free mercenary group. No, if you break the head of one of these guys out, right? So if we click on this one, if you break this guy out, the leader, not the members, the members, you'll just get the common form of payment. But leaders, we're talking about the guys who are at the top. If you free one of them, they will uh, pretty much tell you that they will join you. They will join your kingdom, right? As or, or your cause. If you're a vassal, then I guess they're going to join the kingdom that you're a part of, right? They will join it uh, for two weeks. Two weeks to two months, depending on whatever you want to depend on, right? Two weeks to two months as a free mercenary. After, those, after that time is over with, they will pretty much leave. So it's kind of like a temporary thank you, right? Plus, they will also offer you most common form of payment on top of that, since they are the leader and they have more uh, say-so on what they can offer, right? 
Then, if you choose to break out the head of a clan, not a minor clan, let's say um, a regular clan. Uh, let's say from the Vlandia, pretty much. Not these guys. Pretty much any of these guys. I'm trying to look for somebody with a family, right? So, let's say he was uh, captured, right? He's worth a little bit of something. He has a lot of fiefs, right? So he's, you know, he has power. So if you break one of these guys out, what they're going to offer you is to pretty much all their clan members, which are these guys right here, they will uh, pretty much show up in your army tab once. What I mean by this, I'm going to try my best to explain it, is whenever you press create army, they since they're not a part of your uh, kingdom, right, they're still going to show up here, but only one time. Once you call them to one army once you press done and they get called right after that army is disbanded they will not be on this list anymore they will not be here anymore it's just a one-time thing as a pretty much like hey if you're ever at war we'll come to your side type of thing right which i think makes sense plus you'll get the most common form of payment so uh that's pretty much the compensation so if it's a common lord you just get the common form of payment which is the troops dinars and reputation if it's a minor faction they're going to join you as a free mercenary group for a specified amount of time and then if you're the head of a clan uh you'll pretty much promise your clan members to uh join your army whenever you decide to call up an army one time i think those are pretty good let me know what you guys think of that but now let's get into the negatives so obviously if you're going to break somebody out if you're going to break one of these guys out, there has to be some negatives that have to do with, you know, the location. So here's what my negatives would in, uh, include. And this is negatives for uh, pretty much the whole thing. So negative reputation with the owner clan of the castle or town. So whoever owns this, as we can see, the uh, owner clan is the Leonipardes. Those guys, you will have negative reputation with them. And you would also have negative reputation with the faction leader which is me right now, but whoever the faction is listed right there, you would also have negative reputation with them. Then you will also lose 10 to 30% or 20 to 50% if you're trying to break out a leader of your troops. And this is dependent on your tactic skill because your tactic skill has to do with uh, right here. If we check right here, decrease the sacrifice troop amount when you're trying to get away. So I think this would be a good thing to base it off of. Because this is like when you try to surrender or run away through a battle. I feel like this would be a, a great place to put this little percentage up under. So again, 10 to 30% of your troops if it's just a normal clan person. Or 20 to 50% if it's a leader. So you will gain some troops from them. But at the same time, you will be losing a percentage of your troops. And it will be at random. So it depends if you want to take the risk. And uh, pretty much why you're going to lose them is because they will stay to, they will stay behind to pretty much cause a distraction or defend your escape, whatever you want to call it. Now, if you ever get caught and put in the same dungeon that you broke someone out of, uh, you will be there for uh, twice as long or whatever percent you want to really put on there because they upgraded their security ever since you broke out, right? So that's pretty much my concept of breaking lords out of dungeon. I know it's a lot, but like I said before, it's in the description. It's like all bullet pointed, you know what I'm saying? Bullet pointed. So yeah, let me know what you think and uh, give me your thoughts on that one. But that moves us on to the second part, which is ship and desert trading. Uh, so this one's kind of a more outlandish idea, but I'm pretty sure I played with a mod on Warband that, that did a similar thing with ships. I'm pretty sure it was one of the big mods that's on Warband. But yeah, so that's kind of where I got the idea. And I think it will be actually kind of good for this game. Now hear me out. So this will buff Sturgia and the Asurai economy. Probably not saying the other guys right, right? But pretty much these guys up here and these guys down here, right? They're very weak in my opinion. When it comes to all the other clan, these guys are very weak. And I think this will boost uh, their economy because this will bring in more resources and in turn will give them better workshops and in turn will give them better uh, taxes to the people who own these towns, right? So um, this will make them just a little bit stronger so they can compete with the rest of the kingdoms. Now, here's the concept. Three towns in both kingdom areas will either have a shipyard or a caravan tent. What I mean by this is for the Sturgeon place up here, uh, let's say Reval. I'm pretty sure it lists. Yeah, I listed it. Reval. 
uh, Bulgard and uh, Sibir, they will have a shipyard as a part of their town. Like whenever you walk through the town, there's going to be an area when you hold left alt and it will show shipyard, right? And then for the the Asari, there will be uh, three towns, the Askar, Ayakis, and the Hubyar, these three. They will have a thing called the Caravan Tent. And now, what these places will do, you will show up to them, and it's the same way as pretty much... It's the same way as caravans are done, but these are going to be more end game options. So, uh, they will give you, you will meet with the head of whoever owns the caravan tent or the shipyard, and they will give you an option to spend 50 to 60k dinars and give one companion to pretty much travel out of the map. Like, they're going to be outside the map, right? It's kind of, you know, they're not going to be traveling. You're not going to see them traveling. They're going to go outside the map. If it's the caravan tents, they're going to go down. If it's the shipyards, they're going to go up. And uh, they're going to travel out of the map for about one to two months. I don't know the timeline, you know, it could be tweaked, but one to two months, right? And this is also supposed to be an end game feature, just to make that clear. There's going to be a maximum of two parties that you can send out, which can be checked right here. Uh, whenever you, there's limits, see there's limits on parties, I'm pretty sure there's a limit on caravans, I think I can only have three at this point, and there'll be another one called, you know, I guess travelers, that, that'd actually be a cool thing to say, travelers, and it will only be two, and, um, you can either send one of each, or two of one kind, right, and clan tier three, so you're gonna need clan tier three, to send your first one out and clan tier five to send your second one out. I feel like this will space it out very well and um, make it more balanced. Now, after once two months, you will either get a notification that your companion came back with gold and other goods or came back empty handed. Um, the success rate of the companion will go off their trade skill. So if the companion has a high trade skill, right? I'm pretty sure I have a companion with a high trade skill. Yes, a high trade skill, right? The higher this is, the better chance they will come back. And also, um, I'm going to show you why this ties into the trade skill, right? But also, I think it would be nice if we kind of added the culture system a little bit more. So I feel like the Azerite culture should get a 10% bonus in profits if, um, if you put them in charge of uh, pretty much the desert trading, the one that's the caravan tent. And the Sturgeons should have a 10%. If they're, if your companion is of Sturgeon culture, they get a 10% profits in ships. So this has to do with the companion's culture. I feel like that would be cool. It'll make you kind of search for a better companion that is compatible to the game. And I think it will bring the culture system up because the culture system right now is kind of bare bones. But I feel like you can really improve it. Now, um... The reason I say it's based off your trade skill because this will give us a reason to build up companions trade skill through caravans. So early game, not early game, but kind of mid game is kind of caravans, right? You make caravans, uh, your companions over time as they, uh, what do you call it? Operate a caravan, their trade goes up because like as you can see right here, how to learn, operate caravans. So as their skill goes up and eventually it will get, you know, to the top parts above 200 or whatever this will be the perfect time to you for you to go and um either start a ship expedition or a desert trading expedition right with uh whichever place you choose right like the ones i listed before so i feel like this will make it um it will make kind of trading like it will give us a progression system right it will give us like oh first you start with the workshops and you get to the caravans you know then you have your fiefs and then eventually at the end you can have you know trading that's outside of the map pretty much like and then the profits uh that's up for discussion i i really i didn't think much of the profits you know it'd be controversial like do you want to give huge amounts do you not want to give huge amounts but um yeah, that's up for discussion. Let me know what you guys think about for profits wise. What do you think they should get? But also one thing that I wanted to add is I think there should be a way for you to choose what your companion focuses on in the same menu where you choose your companion and you choose to pay. I feel like there should be a thing that says what kind of material do you want him to focus on? Same way as workshops have as same way as like workshops have like a material that you can um, use for your workshop, right? That same way. But yeah, 
that's ship slash desert trading. Like I said, it's a lot. I talked about a lot. I probably, you know, went off some tangents. Maybe I wasn't completely uh, understandable. But um, yeah, please read in the description. Everything that I just said, it's all in the description. It's all written down. Let me know what you think. And uh, yeah, I might make a third one. I, I enjoy these. Whenever I think of something, I write it down. I kind of, I try to see how it will affect the world and how if it would be a good or bad change and kind of try to make it as balanced as possible, right? But yeah, like always, uh, ask me any questions and uh, stay safe.